a leader, or they are the leader. They don't just go out in the battlefield and carry the gun and go in there what direction. It, it don't work that way. They're taught and they're trained. In the church, it's very, very difficult to teach that kind of training in the church. Because when you put some pressure on people, they leave. They don't want it. They don't, they don't want it. They, they want to they think they're walking through a rose garden and picking off roses and just kind of sniffing them and go along their way. And that is not how it works. This is why the church is where it is today around the world. Follow me at what I'm leading up to now. So what's the lesson? We are warriors and we are to reclaim land the enemy has stolen. We are warriors and we're to reclaim land the enemy has stolen from us because Jesus had the victory over them. And we tend, we tend, myself included, we tend to give up too easily. Because the way it's going to be. Because we're not sure. This is God? No, it's not God. This is God? No, it's not God. We're not sure. So be not sure, we just give up because nobody is stupid enough, foolish enough to fight God. I'd never fight Him. So if I think it's from God, I just sit back and say, well, let's go on for the ride. But a lot of things that happen to our life is not of God. And it's not God. And we have a choice to stand up and fight for what is ours. Not only in the area of physical, but mental and financial. Jesus passed this mantle of victory unto us. In a sense, all through the gospel, he was pointing to his demise and our continued work in his name. That's what his whole ministry was about. And if you don't see it, you miss it. And we have this idea that Jesus do it. Jesus do it. If the soldier doesn't call for the general and the policeman doesn't call for the chief, you've got to do it yourself because you have delegated authority. Behold, I give unto you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That's a promise from God, which fits right in with what we're talking about today. Jesus passed that mantle of victory and power unto you and I. We have that mantle of power. Now you say, where is it? Well, follow me. Forty-four times in the Gospels, Jesus was called the Son of God. Forty-four times. He was called the Son of God. Only three of those times did he actually recognize that distinction. He was called the Son of God by the priests, the high priests, the demons, those thief on the cross, John the Baptist, his disciples, Angel Gabriel, Martha, elders, and, and most everyone that come in contact with, they recognized him as the Son of God. But what did he say about himself? He called himself 96 times the Son of Man. He was making a point. Everybody else recognized him as the Son of God. He recognized himself as the Son of God. But when he talked about it, and where he was, he specifically said, Son of Man. Now, now why did he do that? This is, this, is what, this is what I want you to understand. He was planting a seed that what he was doing, we could do also. Because you are a son of a man. I'm a son of a man. And God in the word calls us sons and daughters. So when Jesus is saying that, he's telling us something. Now we recognize him as the son of God. Son of God, son of man, he was both. Now I know that is, that is extremely difficult to comprehend in our mind. How could you, how could you be from heaven and come down and be the son of, son of man and, and give up all that? Well, Philippians says, Philippians uh, tells us in uh, chapter 2, he says, But made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a servant and coming in the likeness of man. Now I don't know how that happened. I, I, I really don't. And the, he, he was both. And if he had only been the son of God, we would feel like following him to be totally impossible, which most people do. In fact, I believe for the most part, I believe in most part, that is the mindset of many believers. He's son of God. Get out of here. What are you talking about doing what Jesus did? He's the son of God. 
He, he's the son of God. How, how, how could you possibly, how could you possibly think of healing somebody as the son of God here? I mean, he was the son of God. But he didn't talk that way. And they didn't grasp it. Just like the people day to day don't grasp it. They don't understand it. They, I look at him, and I, for years I've looked at him as the son of God. Jesus. And he is. He is that. But he's also a son of man who was only able to do what he did by being filled with the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that we have. Now that gives us hope. Because he recognizes as the son of man, he recognizes some of the problems that we're going through. If he had been the son of God and only the son of God, he wouldn't recognize the temptations and the problems that we have down here. But because he's walked this path before, he knows exactly what we're going through. He knows exactly the trials you're having. He knows the temptations that you're having in your life from the enemy. He knows the deception. It was the devil who recognized him as the son of God. He said, if you are the son of God, turn these rocks into stone. And he said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the Father's mouth. Again, right then, the very first in Luke chapter 4. But I believe that that's the mindset of many believers today, son of God. He's, he's God. He's Jesus. And he is. But he set that aside, which is impossible with the human mind to really comprehend. He set that aside and he came as the Son of Man. The people have asked a thousand times, well, could he have failed? And I, I don't know. But for the most part, we are focused on the Son of God while he was focused on the Son of Man. He was trying to tell us something. Why didn't he say he was the Son of God? He was the Son of God. Well, what, what's this big secret then? Why, why did he say, I'm the Son of God? Yeah, devil, I am the Son of God. I can strike you right dead right now if I wanted to. He didn't say that. He talked about being the Son of Man because he knew that when you and I came on the sea, he was going to give you that mantle and give me that mantle, and he wanted us to go out and do his work. Let me ask you a question. You don't have to answer it, and I don't want you to answer it, but aren't you tired? of talking and hearing about a gospel of power but never seeing it in action. Does that ever frustrate you? I mean, that frustrates me every day of my life. I was in a situation yesterday and this lady was sicker and sick. And I was sitting there looking at her at this party we were at. And I was thinking, oh God, you could just change this whole party if we could get her healed. And there's a little voice down in my inside here. But it didn't tell me to pray for her. Because I lacked the confidence. It was me. I lacked the confidence to get up and just go over and say, Would you mind if I just prayed for you and healed you? I mean, that would change that whole family. You guys know what I'm talking about. It changed that whole family. It would, change, it would have really changed the, the, the party, I guarantee you that. But I lacked that confidence. And I, and I, I admit that. And I, you know, if I'd gone, you say, well, what would you do if you went back again? No, I don't think so. I, I don't think so. I don't have that confidence. And I guess a lot of people don't either. Because we don't do a lot of little things like that, going out, just stepping over and saying, can I minister to you? We, 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 we're a lot, I love this. We are a lot like the whisk vacuum cleaner salesman who comes to the door. And he's got this big vacuum cleaner. He's got all the paraphernalia. And he's got his pitch book over here under his arm. And you, you know, it looks so good. You invite him in because he is sweating and he's dragging this all in from the car. And he's got the, the tubes and the, the hoses and he's standing at the door. And he just sweats dropping off of him. And he says, yeah, I'm, I'm from the Wiz Vacuum Cleaner Company, ma'am. And we got some special deals in this area. Could I demonstrate it for you? And it's, oh, why not? Why not? So he gets in. He takes a bag of dirt and throws it on the floor. And tells you how powerful this whiz vacuum cleaner is. He says, let me just say one thing. Before you plug it in, take the dogs. No, it's not going down that route. Take the dogs out of the room and take the kids out of the room because it's so powerful, it'll suck them right up into the vacuum cleaner. Whoa. Now that's a vacuum cleaner, Kathy. 
And then he hands you the sales brochure and he leaves. No demonstration, no sales. Even I can figure that 